We're gonna help you apply to NCAP because it's an amazing school. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome to my world so today's video is going to be about the application process to NCAP and today I have my roommate with me hi I'm Corinne her roommate I am a chemistry major also in the honors program and my social media is Corinne.debris and it'll pop up down here yes, down below um, and we're gonna help you apply to NCAP because it's an amazing school yeah. <laughs> All right, so first we're gonna talk about early action, early decision, and regular decision. So what did you do for that? I applied early, this early, wait, is it early action? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I don't remember. I applied early, but not where I had to basically commit if I got accepted, which I believe is early, early decision. decision. Yeah. yeah, so I applied early action, and for our year, the deadline was pretty early. It was like October 15th. Um, I'm not exactly sure when the deadline is for the next people applying, but I applied early action um, and I heard back from them very quickly. Yeah, I also applied early action and I believe, yeah, the deadline was October 15th. And this is a non-binding, so the difference between early action and early decision is early decision is if you know you want to go to NCAT, do early decision, and if they accept you, that means you're going because it's binding. But if you're still unsure, but you want to hear back earlier, do early action. And then there's also regular decision where they do it over a rolling basis, but um, you will hear back later on and not as soon as early action. Yeah, and another perk with early action is for scholarships. Um, a lot of times if you have a school-based scholarship, you might be able to have a higher chance since you already know that you got into the university. Yeah. Oh, and also if you're thinking about doing the honors program, definitely do early action. Mm -hmm. And I might make a video on the honors program later on, but. Yeah, cause it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna talk about high school transcripts. So you really wanna make sure that you get your transcripts <laughs> and talk to your counselor about that because that's the only way you can apply to the school. And then um, my stats, I had a cumulative 4.0 GPA and I did not do the SAT or ACT because of COVID. And in California, they closed all the testing centers, so there was no way for me to even do the test. And they did have it test optional, so that was great for when I applied to the school. Yeah, and for me, I actually submitted test scores. I'm from Maryland. Um, and some of the centers did close during COVID, but with my high school, I was able to get it in literally a week before like schools got closed and everything kind of happened with COVID. Um, and I got a 1220 with my SAT score and that was the only time I took it. And that's the only one I had because I wasn't able to take it again. Um, and it was fine. For NCAT, some of the average SAT scores are about a 1080. Um, so obviously if you're above that or below that, like it doesn't mean that you won't be able to get in and different things like that. Um, for my GPA, I also got a 4.0 cumulative um, for NCAT. It's an average of about a 3.0. Um, so still, if you're above it, below it, it doesn't really matter. Um, and some of the, just to say some of the admissions requirements, um, they do recommend and require that you have four years of English, four years of math, at least three years of science, two of social studies, and two of a Yeah, language. so make sure you have all of those down because if you don't, you won't get accepted. You need to have all mm -hmm. of those. And also, I believe um, doing the SAT and ACT is optional for 2022 applicants, so that is great. Um, but if you do want to do the test, I recommend it because it can also put you at a higher standing for getting accepted since you have that test score and your GPA and everything. Yeah. So next we're going to talk about where you can apply for North Carolina a &T. So I did it through the Common App. I think that's where mostly everyone yeah. does it. <laughs> and 
it's pretty simple. Like once you do the Common App, you can click the school that you want to apply to and you do all of the requirements that they have in the application. Yeah, I also applied through Common App, but I know they have a software where you can apply directly through their website. Um, Common App is just easier if you're also applying to other universities because um, it's all in one place. Um, specifically for North Carolina's app, North Carolina Auntie's application, um, they didn't require a Common App essay or there wasn't really many writing supplements like you might find at other universities. So it was a pretty simple application. When you do do the Common App, there is one um, essay that you need to write and that's just, it goes to all universities that you apply to. And you really wanna make sure that you perfect your essay and keep working hard on it because this is the time where the colleges get to know a little bit more about you other than um, your grades and your test scores. So you really wanna ask someone like a teacher or a friend to proofread it and make sure you have everything good for your essay. Yeah, so for me, I had like my parents, um, sister read it and just help me perfect it because you're not able to actually talk to the admissions team, so you want to put yourself out there in paper as best as you can. Um, like I said before, ANSI didn't really require an essay, but this is just advice for any other university or college that you're applying to. Mm -hmm. and, and also for the sorry, oh, also yeah. for the honors program because there are some writing pieces. For yeah, them. and especially if you do decide to not do a test or like the ACT or SAT. Um, you can use the essay to your advantage because you don't have a test score now they can get to know you more and like academically or just who you are as a person so it's really good to perfect that essay. It's not always about GPA and grades. <laughs> Make sure you're volunteering and you talk about your activities because they really want to know what you do outside of school. Yeah so to talk on extracurriculars I'll give a few of the ones that I did um, I did a couple of church ministries which involved community outreach, um, mentorship, leadership, um, and in my school I had like some clubs that I helped my friends start um, as well as just participated in based on my interests like band, sewing, um, different things like that. And I also was very active in my community. I tried to do some of the community projects that they had, whether it's school beautification, um, where I'm from, they had like teen court that we could participate in. So just a lot of different things um, that you can really make your resume stronger and show that you're a well-rounded person, not just someone who has straight A's and perfect SAT score, but you're actually going out and making a difference. Yeah. All right, so after you've done the whole application process, you submitted your essay, you have all your requirements ready, now it's time to submit your application and there is an application fee of $60. So you, if you aren't able to pay for that, they, you can get a fee waiver if you ask your school um, to provide you with that fee waiver. Yeah, so I, I didn't get a fee waiver. Excuse me, I paid the $60, but I know that in my area, like um, our county was offering some if you had like their free and reduced lunch type of plan. Um, so definitely just reach out to the university. The staff here is very helpful, very responsive, um, so they can help you um, if you have that financial difficulty. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about some programs that you can join as a freshman. And so we're both a part of the honors program and you can apply to the honors program if you do early action and then you do their other separate application process. Yeah, so for me, um, just also some scholarships, one of their bigger scholarships they offer are the Lewis, Lewis and Dowdy something? The Dowdy. Elizabeth, yeah, the Elizabeth <laughs> and Lewis and Dowdy, Dowdy scholarship. And the Cheat and White scholarship. And those are both full tuition scholarships. Um, and that whole scholarship process is pretty competitive. I was actually fortunate to be a finalist, not a recipient, but it's okay. Same. Um, we were both fortunate to be finalists. But um, as a finalist, we were um, offered admissions into the honors program. Um, and so for that application process, that's where the writing comes in. Um, I believe there's like two, two like essay prompts that yeah. we had to answer, as well as a few recommendations that we had to send in um, to the honors program um, for our application to be considered. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that process went if you weren't like 
in the running for the scholarship, but the honors program they say is available even after you're admitted. So you can apply during, as your student, like your freshman year, if you wanted to become a part of the honors program. Yeah, and then they also do have an interview process. So um, I don't know if they're going to change it, but um, we had to do an online interview and then a physical interview face-to-face -face through Zoom. So, yeah. so for yeah. that, I would just say I'm not completely sure if that was for the honors program yeah. or for the scholarship, because like I said, we were both um, in the running for the scholarship. Um, and that was a more in-depth process, like we even had a whole weekend dedicated to scholarship interviews. So I'm not exactly sure how that process goes if you weren't applying for the scholarship. Mm -hmm. And then some perks, if you are accepted into the honors program, you can pick your classes before um, all the rest of the regular students. So they'll give you like a day or time to pick out your classes, which is really good for college because <laughs> yeah. classes go out they so fill fast. So fast. <laughs> and then um, also, if you're fortunate enough to be living in the villages, which are the nicer dorms, you get more space. So that's always a plus. Yeah, and also you get to make a lot of new, meet a lot of new people. Mm -hmm. um, we were on campus about two days before the other freshmen were, and we met like so many people who were honors. I met a lot of people from Maryland. Taylor's having a little trouble finding some <laughs> There's people only from, one California. Person from California. <laughs> but I did find a lot of people from Maryland and was able to connect with them. So it's still like a very nice community and we all live together pretty much both um, freshmen through seniors so we can all communicate with each other without even really having to leave the dorm. Like sometimes they'll just be like, hey, we're downstairs doing this. Like you want to come? Like, yeah. Type of thing. So yeah. It's such a good environment. You play card games with people, people are always asking if you want to hang out. It's really cool and I would definitely recommend looking into the honors program if that's something you want to do as a freshman. Yes. So there are a lot of scholarships that the school provides, but there's also a lot of opportunities for outside scholarships, so you definitely want to look into those some more. Um, there could be scholarships about being left-handed like they have so many scholarships guys and you really want that free education So please apply to as many scholarships as you can Yeah, so like with the school scholarships the full tuition scholarships those are extremely competitive Especially as out-of-state students. Um, this is a public university in North Carolina So they have a quota to kind of fill where they have to have a certain percentage of in-state students um, and the out-of-state students are like kind of it's so competitive. It's very competitive, even if like you have the stats for it. Like as you heard our stats, like we're very qualified to be a full tuition scholarship recipient. Um, it just could have been that we were there. It was just they had a few more people who were out of state that might have been a little bit better than us, um, and things might have been different if we were in if we were North Carolina residents. I mean, we're not sure, but um, you just have to keep that in mind if you're an out of state student. Um, but there's a chance that things might not go your way just because you're an out-of-state student. Um, but definitely um, look into other scholarships, whether if your family is a part of different organizations that offer them, like churches, sororities, different places like that offer scholarships. Um, especially if you're attending an HBCU, I actually got a scholarship um, because I'm being a science major at an HBCU. Um, it was called the Fossey Program, if you wanted to look it up. Um, so there's just a lot of different opportunities, so definitely keep looking, keep applying, just really put yourself out there. It's okay if you get some um, negative responses, just keep trying and it'll all work out. Yeah, don't let anyone tell you no, like a no is just means there's another door open for you to get some more scholarship money. Oh, and also apply for the FAFSA, especially if you're a need-based student. Um, apply to that and you can get government aid too. Yeah, and also just a disclaimer, I know a lot of people who I'm friends with had like questions about the FAFSA. Um, you definitely still need to apply, even if you know that the government's not gonna give you aid, because if you don't fill out the FAFSA, then you basically can't get scholarships. That's just how it works. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know why, but a lot of times when you apply to scholarships, like you have to have the fast yeah. for them to send you those funds. All right, guys. So that concludes today's video. Thanks for watching, and thank you for joining the video. <laughs> I know this is my first appearance on the channel. Yeah, she'll be a part of a lot more videos. Yeah, we have a couple more college college content. Yeah. I guess you could
So don't forget to like and subscribe down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.